Right, let's address the Dabur Q1 numbers. They seem bang in line with the street expectations. Our in-house expert, Agam, is also here with us. Agam, take us through the key numbers and how they compare with what the consensus expectations were. So you already said that they are very much in line with street expectations. In terms of the top line revenues, which have moved up as much as 11% at around uh, 2,069 crores, uh, that's very much in line. I think, uh, you know, the two key numbers that I was, I was looking at, well, one was the gross margins. So gross margins have expanded by as much as 320 basis points at around 53%. And that's a positive because this is higher than what the street was expecting. We were expecting about 100 to 200 basis points expansion. Secondly, moving on, when it comes to EBITDA margins, uh, we have seen that trickle down effect. So once again, we are looking at EBITDA at around 15.5%, slightly higher than once again expectations. And in terms of uh, the, the bottom line too, we are looking at uh, that, more, that number which is more or less in line with street. In terms of volumes, that is the other key variable that the markets will be keeping an eye on. That comes at around 8.1%. Once again, as per ex expectations, do remember in Q4, we, have, we saw volumes at around 8.1% and year on year too, the volumes were at around 8.3. So they have maintained that stability in volumes. And finally, when it comes to segments, uh, we are looking at uh, the consumer segment looking at around 8.9% growth and the food segment looking at around 15.5% growth. Perhaps a certain uh, quarter of the market may be looking at the toothpaste segment as well, where we are looking at around 24% growth. But on the, on the whole, numbers are very much in line with expectations and a stable set of numbers uh, for that matter. But there is a slight beat at the gross margin level, you think? It is, absolutely. Okay. Is that on account of lower raw material costs because the low raw material costs have come in lower by about 50 odd crores? So given the fact that Dabur is into uh, you know uh, a lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, products which will in involve LLP for that matter, and a lot of these products or a lot of these raw materials will be linked to crude. That's the reason why uh, we are looking at that expansion which is broader than expectations. And it's not just for Dabur. We have seen several other FMCG companies which have come up with their numbers before this, mm -hmm. and you know. The, the expansion on gross margins has been higher than what we were expecting. So, well, Dabur in this case is no exception either. And that's where the positive surprise comes in. And this, yes. Uh, well, their strength in their hair as well. The hair oil category reported 13% growth. And also their shampoo business ended the quarter with a growth of about 12%. And their international business also is a steady growth where they say their Turkey business grew by 22% and their Nepal business also grew by 14%. On the other markets, all of them grew by 10%. Steady quarter for Dabur in line with our estimates? I would say so. That's how I'd uh, say the numbers are very much in line with street expectations and a very steady quarter given uh, the, 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 the industry itself has been grappling with a relatively low demand for now. All right, Agam, thanks so much for taking us through that. The stock is not reacting too much, but then you need to remember that it's already trading very close to its 52-week high of 304. So it's just about 8, 9 rupees away from that level. So overall, it seems to be an inline set of earnings. You know, the gross margins have improved, something that we've seen in the case of other FMCG companies as well. And the